so in the previous video we tried to get a feel of what tensors are and so in this video we are going to discuss the main title of this series the stress tensor okay we have established what stresses are some superior properties represented uh, as tensors now let us see why stress is a tensor okay the stress sensor we know that it provides information about traction all possible orientation around a, around a point and we also saw that what a tensor is the tensor for a tensor each component of a tensor require two direction and a, a scalar value okay so uh, the relationship this the, from the cauchy's uh, stress theorem is this okay now let us take an example okay suppose we are working in some ijk basis function whose uh, so e i e1 e2 e3 basis function sorry and uh, these are the components of the stress okay at a point in that uh, coordinate system now we what we want to find out are the tractions on a plane that is perpendicular to this 100 uh, direction uh, unit vector okay basis vector so after multiplication what we will see is that this sigma 1 1 is equal to t1 sigma 2 1 is equal to t2 sigma 3 1 is equal to t3 what does this mean that each component of our second order tensor that Cauchy's stress tensor is nothing but a component of traction not traction but the, a component of attraction in a plane okay 1 0 0 okay the first row all the element in the first row uh, sorry first uh, first 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 column are nothing but the components of the stress uh, component of the traction in a plane that is perpendicular to 100 zero, zero. similarly all the elements of the uh, traction uh, traction of the stress vector uh, stress tensor all this for the second column are nothing but the components of the tensor in in a uh, plane that is perpendicular to this basis vector similarly for the third column they are the component of the traction in the 0 0 1 um, unit vector unit basis vector okay so that's what these components mean okay so how does it prove that this is a tensor okay let's see so each component say sigma j i in this uh, matrix 3 3 by 3 matrix is nothing but the component of the traction vector on a plane with i normal right i normal and unit vector along g direction for example sigma 1 3 is what you first get the plane that is perpendicular to 0 0 1 so you have specified one direction okay the another direction is the direction of the traction on that plane okay first you define the plane and on that plane the direction of the traction or the component of the traction in the direction 3 uh, in the direction 1 okay is that component okay we'll see another picture that will, will make things clear so to describe each component you need two directions and obviously the magnitude okay this sigma 1 3 sigma 2 3 sigma 3 3 are magnitude and two direction these two directions are what first direction will specify the plane okay the normal unit vector okay and the second one is nothing but the direction in which you are you want the component of the traction okay fine that is why since each component requires two directions that is why stress is a second order tensor for example consider a point p okay we pa it pass we, we consider this plane okay we want to find out the traction on this plane at this point okay we use this matrix sigma sigma matrix and then we multiply this normal unit vector for example this is i correct so if you multiply it by th with a vector i you will get some column matrix right and in j okay this is this i and j are nothing but the basis right like e1 and e2 and then you take the projection of the traction along this direction it will give you this component of the traction vector. traction vector would be something here 
let me draw it the traction vector in this plane would would point something like this right so this projection of the traction vector along the j direction okay in the i plane is the component sigma j i for example if it was 1 and 2 okay so sigma 1 2 sigma 1 2 is what first you go to a plane that is perpendicular to the axis 2 okay see we, we, you go to a plane that is perpendicular to axis 1 sorry for axis 1 and then you take the component in direction 2 on that plane whatever projection that you get is that is this component okay so this component requires two directions right for evaluation so that's why the stress is a second order tensor we also talked about uh, visualization or limitations to our visualization in the previous video and we we we, we, we also sa said that we we as we associate our geometrical object to a specific physical property so what kind of geometrical physical object that we attach with to represent this tensor the answer is what is called a stress cube and using this stress cube you can represent this components of the Cauchy stress tensor how does it look like okay if these are the components of the Cauchy stress tensor at a point in a coordinate system then for at a point P we uh, lying in some space defined by x1 x2 x3 and we draw a cube centered around this point P where this e1 e2 e3 are the local basis for this cube okay and this cube will always be perpendicular to this basis like e1 e2 and e3 it will always be perpendicular to these bases e1 e2 and e3 is local basis and if these are attractions for timing just to, don't don't consider these terms so if these are the tractions on this surface like te3 te1 te2 we, we saw previously that this subscript represented the plane the normal the plane whose normal is e2 right earlier we used small t we are using capital d so we can represent these components like this okay so te3 is made up of what the component of te3 this te3 along e1 direction this is e1 direction is sigma 1 3 in along 2 3 direction in this direction it's uh, in in 2 direction is 2 3 in 3 direction the e3 direction it's 3 3 so this 3 3 3 is represent the plane okay in which you are making the observation and 1 2 3 are the direction in which you are calculating the components similarly you can do it for all the planes you can pause the video and, and, and make a sense of it how these how, how, how are these components are calculated okay so to visualize a, a state of stress at a point we use this kind of a representation in which you are actually not visualizing the stresses but you are you are visualizing the components which are nothing but tractions okay this sigma 1 2 sigma 3 2 sigma 2 2 are not stress okay sigma you if because stress is a superior property right so these are these are just tractions or components of the traction on some planes they're not even tractions they are components of the traction on a specific plane where how to find out where they are using the those indices okay uh, the second uh, the out of the two the second index should for example in three two second index shows with the plane and third uh, the first index like three shows you the direction in which you are taking the component so i'm saying the same thing again and again but <laughs> that's what it is so uh, in, in in some of the literature in some in uh, uh, you'll find that this uh, convention is different okay so the planes will be represented by the first uh, index and the direction will be the second one but here in the way we have introduced things it comes out that this convention uh, is consistent uh, for this discussion but as we'll see that this actually doesn't make any difference because as you'll see in the next slide this matrix uh, sigma which is uh, that uh, which actually represent property stress uh, is actually a symmetric tensor, symmetric uh, matrix why is it so 
so uh, also we will going to answer one more question that we asked before that can we measure stresses the answer is no we can never we don't have any instrument to measure stress as of now okay we can only measure tractions only forces okay that that that's what we can do we can we can measure stresses so that's a fact so this cube as we said we call them stresses point and we why why are okay why are we using a cube because we are tracking the simultaneous uh, uh, what is happening simultaneously in all the three planes earlier we have discussed a single plane okay what's happening in a single plane of single orientation here we are dis- discussing the behavior along all the three planes simultaneously okay and you can you can uh, only one of the plane plane could be interest, in, interested uh, you could be interested in only one of the plane but uh, what we are we are just for sake of understanding things completely like behavior in at least three different directions we we use it this kind of cube and also uh, the in the way that we have uh, represented this uh, stress tensor the components you can you visualize using this cube that's what that's why we have used three faces there are faces in the back of the cube also but the values will be just opposite because of the newton's third law that we discussed Uh, in the first or the second video okay now <clears throat> the symmetry of the cauchy stress tensor we we are going to just briefly discuss them just for a feeling we are not uh, getting into a correct mathematic mathematical uh, derivation for this so consider this thing the stress cube or even e to e3 aligned with even e to e3 the faces will be always normal to this local uh, coordinate system okay now these are the component the stresses now so just take a 2d example of this uh, for example if in 2d plane this may the, the the stress cube then simply get converted into a square okay now we can use the momentum balance basically its conservation of angular momentum so to get to the symmetry argument okay for example consider this thing if you you are seeing from uh, uh you are actually seeing from uh, uh this side okay you are observing things from this side so this thing is nothing but uh, uh the front view of the stress cube i don't want this okay so this uh about point o we are interested in for finding the stresses at point o the stress tensor at point o and this is the front view and you can, from the uh, uh for momentum balance about this point o you can say that sigma 2 3 into da would be equal to sigma 3 2 into da uh where da is uh, actually length of dash not half is actually the complete length of this square and uh, you can conclude that sigma 2 3 is equal to sigma 3 2 you can make similar arguments in 3d so that's why all these cross uh, uh, elements okay non diagonal elements uh, like 2 3 3 2 so sigma ij you can conclude it is equal to sigma ji similarly we can uh, perform the analysis for these components as well if you look from this side or from the top from the left or right so this implies that stress tensor is symmetric okay so out of the nine components now since three are redundant because they are already there in the information is repeated now so that's why we have only six unique components right out of uh, nine so for this is just uh, this is actually an incorrect derivation this is, this is roughly we are explaining stuff but you can uh, refer to this uh, Uh, links will pro- I provide this link in the description you can get uh, go through how do we calc- how do we actually conclude that uh, uh, the stress tensor is symmetric okay so let us conclude what we have studied till now we started with analyzing a body solid body we uh, subject to several forces then we uh, uh, discovered what attraction is what internal forces are at a point okay then we discovered that what cauchy said that the is a linear relationship then we uh, uh, found out the uh, this transformer sigma and we saw that this linear transformation that converts a normal unit vector into a traction vector on a plane 
perpendicular to that uh, lead vector is actually a linear transformation okay so that's why we can represent this transformer as a matrix right that's why we represented it as a matrix then we introduce a superior quality property called stress that represent the complete behavior complete behavior at a point okay complete stress state of stress at a point then and we saw that this transformer sigma and the superior property stresses are one and the same thing because this transformer sigma actually stores the information that we wanted to be in the a property called stress okay we also saw that this component of trend tensors are nothing but traction components of traction on a plane okay along the direction of the basis we let us call them basis planes okay so these are components in the basis plane in some basis direction now uh, simply the components of tensor are the co uh, are nothing but component of traction evaluated on a on a basis plane okay and in a basis direction for example if the uh, you are talking about component sigma i j then the the i would be the basis direction of the basis plane and j would be direction of the basis in which you are taking the component okay so that's what uh, uh, i just wanted to make things clear what we have done till this point and in the next videos we are going a bit deep into what we can do with the tensor what 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 uh, how how we can uh, see important properties of this uh, cauchy stress tensor and we'll introduce what shear stresses are or uh, what tensile or normal stresses are that you already know but we'll introduce them in a different way okay so uh, that's it for this video thank you for your time and please uh, subscribe to the channel if you like this video thank you